What's up guys, my name is Ryan, and if you're like me, you're probably stuck in your house just daydreaming of when you can start traveling again. I've had some time to reflect, and I want to share with you some of my favorite stories from around the globe, so here are my top 10 travel experiences. So my first crazy experience starts in the mountains of Mordor. Now surprisingly, these mountains aren't in New Zealand, rather they are in the Italian Dolomites. So I remember I was in this parking lot in the Dolomites and I saw these mountains in the distance and I just like couldn't believe what they looked like. So I started hiking towards them and I was just blown away by its jagged peaks and it was so mystical and, and dreary. The whole landscape just reminded me of something from the Lord of the Rings. So I decided that I wanted to hike down to the bottom of Mordor. So I followed this path and it led me to this cave. Felt like I was walking into Shelob's lair. Luckily there were no giant spiders inside. I kept walking down and I just couldn't believe the landscape. Everywhere I looked I was surrounded by stunning mountains. The sketchiest part was when I got to this long skinny ladder down the steep cliffside. I felt like Frodo and Sam climbing up the stairs to Mordor. I made it down to the bottom and I was just overwhelmed by the epicness of the area. I didn't have much daylight left so I wasn't able to explore more. I really wanted to climb to the top of those peaks so I guess I gotta go back and do that. But anyways I walked back up the trail and I was able to get some of my most iconic shots ever of me running along this path with the backdrop of Mordor. In the moment, I really didn't appreciate how crazy that landscape was, but now looking back at this footage, I mean, it is one of my all-time favorite travel experiences. Who would have thought Mordor was in Italy? All right, so after the mountains of Mordor, we're gonna head over to Switzerland to spend the night in the Swiss Alps. So I met up with my buddy Danny and we drove to this town called Appenzell. Now we got in a cable car to get up the mountain and we hiked about an hour until we got to the hotel. Now it was only $45 to stay in this hotel. I hadn't slept in a bed for weeks, so I was just like freaking stoked. Anyways, we got all our stuff situated and headed out to find the perfect spot for sunset. Now, the reason we went to this hotel is because they have one of the most beautiful mountains I've ever seen. I mean, just so jagged and it's surrounded by these sheer cliffs. So we hiked around until we find this prime location right on a ledge. We waited for sunrise to get the perfect lighting. It was really cloudy throughout the day, but there was a sliver where the sun could peek through the cloud. We only had like 15 minutes of prime light to get the shot. Danny, he is a FPV drone wizard. He whipped it out and got some of the most incredible shots I've ever seen. I mean, they're just so epic. I'm standing on this cliff ledge. He's flying around me and it was just so crazy. I was able to get some of my favorite shots ever as the setting sun lit up the mountain and made it all orange and red. It was just so beautiful. After the sun went down, we hiked back to the hotel pass out for the night. The next day we woke up and I got some more epic shots before we hiked down. It was easily one of the coolest hotel experiences I've ever had. All right, so while we're still in Switzerland, we're gonna head down to Valle Versasca to reminisce on one of my favorite cliff jumping sessions ever. So Valle Versasca is famous for having this medieval looking bridge that goes over some of the clearest river water in the world. I remember seeing videos of this place years ago and I just always told myself I was gonna go there. Never really knew how I was gonna get there, but when I lived in Switzerland, I was able to go to Valle Versasca several times because I loved clipping there so much. I remember the first time I got there, I was immediately baffled by the beauty of this place. I mean, the water is crystal clear. You can see all the way to the bottom, even though it's like 30 feet deep. The bridge was a prime place to cliff jump. I'd say it's about 30 to 40 feet high. It took me a while to build up the courage to jump. I was able to throw some of my favorite gainers off the water. I also had an amazing time snorkeling in the water there. I mean, just so clear. It was such a fun memory for me. I mean, it's hard to beat cliff jumping in Switzerland. All right, so after Switzerland, we're gonna head over to the islands of Hawaii for my all-time favorite wildlife experience. So something I've always wanted to do is I've wanted to go swim with dolphins. When I lived in Hawaii, I was lucky enough to do it. So me and my friends went to this beach to watch the sunrise. And while we're on the beach, we saw some dolphins jumping out of the water. So we had some flippers and some goggles and we jumped in the water and swam over to these dolphins. I mean, it was honestly pretty scary because we were so far out from the shore and the water was super deep. As we were swimming, we came across this massive pod of 20 plus dolphins. They were just cruising in the water. They were so calm, so chill, and they hardly acknowledged that we were in there. 
We swam with them for about 15 minutes before they disappeared back in the ocean. I mean, it's always cool to see wildlife on TV, but when you see it in person in their natural habitat, it's a surreal experience. After Hawaii, we're gonna head over to the islands of Greece to do one of my favorite travel activities I've ever done. So me and my buddy George, we were in Zakynthos, Greece, looking for something to do. Greece had recently changed their laws and they didn't allow us to rent a car without an international driver's license. I was kind of bummed, but we found an alternative and we decided to rent a boat instead. Both of us had never driven a boat before, but the owner of the boats, he showed us how to work it and within a few minutes, we were off sailing into the ocean blue. We first sailed to this island called Marathonisi. We drove around it. I mean, I just couldn't believe how clear this water was. We drove out to the middle of the ocean and then we headed over to the nearby ocean cliffs. Now this was definitely my favorite part because Zakynthos is famous for its massive white cliffs of over a thousand feet tall. So we basically had this whole cove to ourselves. We anchored the boat and did some swimming in the water, jumped off the boat, had a good time. Everything was good. I was flying my drone to get some shots of the cliffs and the cove. I was on low battery, but I was pushing my drone to the limit because I wanted the epic footage. I had like 5% battery left and it started doing a critical landing basically means you can't stop it from landing. I tried to grab it in midair, but the propeller hit my hand and it fell into the ocean. I dove into the water and grabbed it before it sank to the bottom. Luckily, the SD card wasn't ruined, so I still got that footage, but it was the end of my drone. Anyways, we finished the day off by driving the boat into the sunset. Even though I crashed my drones, it was one of my most memorable travel experiences. All right, so after Greece, we're gonna go head back to the Dolomites for the most epic sunrise of my life. So we were in Trecimi di Lavaredo, and we woke up at 5 a.m. to climb this mountain to watch the sunrise. Now we made the trek over to the base of Trecimi and started hauling butt along the trail because we were short in time. We got to the sketchiest part and normally you need climbing gear, which we didn't have. So we had to scale up this mountain just holding on to some wire that was connected to the rock. I definitely don't recommend doing that super sketch. Anyways, I got to the top without dying and we got there right when the sun was peeking over the horizon. I got some of my all time favorite shots of me on top of the mountain. The combination of the cross with the sunrise and the backdrop of Trey Chime made it for the most memorable sunrise of my life. I mean, we spent about an hour or so up there before the other climbers started to climb up. Everyone else was just decked out in gear. I did some sketchy flips on the cliff and got some crazy Shots of me just sitting on it. Miraculously, we made it down safely. To this day, one of the most memorable things I've done in my life. After Italy, we're gonna head over to Norway's Arctic Circle to experience one of the world's greatest beach. So after me and George's trip to the Dolomites, we flew up to Tromso in Norway. I remember we got there at like midnight and we immediately made the long drive to the Lofoten Islands. On our way to Lofoten, we made a pit stop at the world's most scenic soccer field, but then we made our way to Kavalika Beach. Now, the trail was super muddy and George ruined his white vans, and then we made it over the saddle in the mountain and we finally saw the beach. Now, this place blew my mind. It had mountains that reminded me of Switzerland. The beach had water and sand that looked like the Maldives, and it was surrounded by green vegetation that reminded me of Hawaii. I mean, how the heck? is this place in the Arctic Circle. It doesn't make sense. We were there in August, so the sunset lasted a really long time because we were so close to the North Pole. Now I wanted to climb to this really famous ledge to get a panoramic view of the beach. We weren't able to make it up in time, but I was able to get some of my all time favorite shots. The contrast between the orange sunset, the blue water, the white beach, and the green vegetation made it a photographer's paradise. After the sun went down, we took a different way back and got soaked in some mud as we walked through the swampy marsh. All right, so after Norway, we're gonna head over to Spain to visit the island of Mallorca for one of my all time favorite cliff jumping experiences. So when I look for places to travel, I'm always keeping an eye out for places that are great for cliff jumping. So I remember seeing videos of this ocean arch and I just told myself I had to go jump off it. So I booked a ticket and I went out to the island of Mallorca. Now this was my first trip going alone, so I was a little scared. Anyways, I got to the location and I was immediately blown away by the beauty of the water and the surrounding area. When you think of the Mediterranean, this is it. It had the sailboats, blue freaking water, and dozens of cliff to jump off of. I mean, it was literal paradise for me. So when I got there, I headed over to the arch. I mean, my stomach started getting really nervous when I saw how big it was. It was like 60 feet high. It was definitely the tallest cliff I've ever jumped off. I remember I got to the ledge and I remember debating if I should just jump off 
or do a gainer and possibly over rotate which would be really bad but I decided to send it and I hucked a gainer off it. I landed perfectly in the water. I just remember I feeling so alive and stoked that I did it. I made some friends there and we celebrated on an air mattress in the middle of the ocean. After I did some cliff jumping I found some really cool sea caves to snorkel through. I mean, that'll forever be one of my favorite travel days. I mean, just swimming around in clear water, cliff jumping, it doesn't get much better than that. All right, so after my Yorka, we're gonna head over to Isla Sky in Scotland for one of my more sketchy shots that I've gotten. So last summer, I got obsessed with the scenery of the Isla Sky. So I decided I was gonna book a one-way ticket to Scotland to see what the hype was about. Now, I was just blown away by the landscape. I felt like it was on a giant golf course with some wicked rock formations. Now, I made it over to this place called the Korang Mountains. Now, I had to drive on some crazy roads to get there. Anyways, I got to the parking lot and I saw this really unique rock formation in the distance. I decided that I was going to climb on top of it. So, I started hiking over, ran into some sheep and some really impressive rock fields. I started climbing up the rocks and I debated if it was worth it. I mean, it was really, really scary, but I decided to send it and got some of the most epic shots I've ever gotten. Everyone around there probably thought I was crazy. Looking back on it, it was definitely a sandy decision. But anyways, I made it down safely and it was definitely one of my more sketchy travel memories. All right, to end this video, we're gonna head back to Norway's Arctic Circle to experience the Northern Lights. It was at the beginning of September in Norway and the Aurora Borealis was starting to come out. Now, there's this really unique mountain in this town called Senja. Now, to get to Senja, you have to drive through one of the sketchiest road tunnels I've ever driven through. But anyways, I made it through the sketchy cave to the little town of Senja. I got to the base of the mountain and I started hiking up. Now, it was actually a pretty tough hike, but I made it to the top and I was just blown away by this beauty of this mountain. It just comes straight out of the ocean. One of the most epic mountain peaks I've ever seen. I had this crazy idea of spending the night on top of the mountain there so that I could see the northern lights over Senya. I found this mossy area right on a cliff and I decided that I would sleep there. Great idea, right? Anyways, I brought a blanket. I used my camera bag as a pillow. I slept there for a few hours, freezing my butt off, and I was just waiting for those northern lights to show up. So around midnight, these lights started showing up and it was one of the most exhilarating experiences of my life. It's just really hard to explain. I looked up into the sky and it looked as if glowing snakes were moving. I mean, they were just moving so fast and they were so vibrant. It made me think of how the Eskimos and the Sami people must have felt when they saw them. I mean, it's nothing short of magic. So I watched the Northern Lights for about an hour got some of the most crazy footage I've ever gotten. My original plan was to sleep up there all night, but I got super scared and cold. For some reason, I thought there might be polar bears in the area, so I headed back down to my car. But looking back, it was such a crazy time, and I'll forever be grateful for it. And the one thing that is so great about traveling, it allows you to witness new things that make you feel alive. So I hope this video inspired you, and I pray that life can get back to normal soon so we can all get back out into the world and travel responsibly. You guys can find me on Instagram at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan, and we will see you later.